Rumors and dropstones suggest that the Molentary Express has a second secret destination. The only thing the trio knows about how to get there is that they need to do something on the train. With nothing else to go on, the three start searching for anything that might give them access. Chapter 3, A Diverging Path Good morning everybody, it's Midnight and Beyond, welcoming you back to the world of Professor Layton and the Diabolical Box. I just can't stop thinking about this phantom town we keep hearing about. Could the rumors be true? If I recall correctly, the next stop on this line is the perfectly normal town of Luxembel. Well then, how do we get to the phantom town? That's an excellent question, Luke, though I don't have the answer. But if the Molentary Express does indeed head for the parts unknown, the crew will know something about it. The professor like was Got all that? Okay, we are back on the train and there's sure to be a bunch of new puzzles for us to find as well, so let's go back and forth and back and forth through the train, trying to see what we could find. Still can't make our way back here, unfortunately. It looks like there's no way in, huh? Hmm. Maybe we'll find access later on, but for now let's just go forward. Uh, into this room we have Oh, good, it's not the creepy lady's room, thankfully. Maybe she stopped in the other towns. Maybe she won't be here anymore. That'd be awesome if we got, like, some new tenants that we could see throughout the train. We're not just talking to the same people over and over, but we are going to talk to this guy over and over. I beg your pardon, sir, but we're not open for business at the moment. Do visit us later. You're really closed? Yes, you see, on the way to Luxembourg, there's this long, unlit tunnel we have to pass through. While in the tunnel, none of the of the scenic views our restaurant affords patrons will be visible. None of the scenic views our restaurant affords patrons will- what? It is Mr. Beluga's wish that all patrons will be able to enjoy the Okay, sure. Hence our temporary suspicion, suspension of the service. So, they don't let them eat when they don't have cool stuff to look at. Why don't you just put a TV in here or something like that? I don't know. I'm sure they get room service. And, like, aren't there any windows in the sink and bedrooms? Like, seriously. Uh, if we go in here, the chef has nothing new for us. Just talking about his hamster. He's doing great, apparently, even though we haven't, like, played with him at all. Uh, I'm actually about to get close with the kitchen. Take a break until we get to Luxembourg. Uh, most of the train shuts down for this leg of the trip, so you might as well go rest in your room. If we, at the end of all this, we just need to, like, go and examine our bedroom to fall asleep. That's going to be really unfortunate. If, like, we're just wasting time here. Over here we got more closed rooms, but this one right here, uh, thankfully she is not here. Yeah, um, I guess that means that is what we're going to be doing. There's literally nothing to do. Well, there's, oh, well, we could do this. I guess it wasn't a complete waste of time to take the trip back here. As you saw in the last episode, there were three puzzles that we missed, so we might as well just go ahead and get those out of the way right now. We got puzzle number 41, cube halves. Below are four halves of four separate cubes. Each of the halves is shaped so that when fitted in within when fitted with an identically shaped piece, Jesus, these two halves form a whole cube. However, one piece below fails to meet those requirements and doesn't form a cube when joined with another identical piece. Circle the odd piece out from the choices A through D below. I wonder what decision they like decision making goes into deciding which uh, multiple choice answers have you just tapping a button or circling the answer. Anyway, hint number one. B looks like it should fit together with its other half quite nicely. Hint number two. D and another piece shaped like it would make a fine cube as well. Hint number three. You're down to two possible answers at this point. Choose the one that seems the least likely to fit with its twin. I got the first answer that, like, that was like the most straightforward first two hints ever and the other one was just like, try. Uh, the answer is C. That was a really crummy circle. That was also a really crummy circle. or just got canceled out at the last second, but it's C. And now to test my theory. A 
And there we have it. That's right, so you will now form a cube when joined with another identical piece. Some areas of the shape are just like, are just a little too complex to fit together neatly. Still, with only a few alterations, you could probably change the shape into something that works, don't you think? I don't know, can you? Got that taken care of. I kind of wish that, like, wasn't it in Curious Village we actually got to see bottles, like, inside the house of that had the puzzles in them or something like that? I don't know. Uh, puzzle number 49, a royal show-off. In a far-off country, there's a king whose favorite pastime is showing off the latest possessions he's collected. The subjects of his kingdom are forbidden to purchase items the king has acquired for a month or so. Only once he's tired of the new purchase can the common folk finally buy that item for themselves. However, the other day, the king bought a new item that had him all but commanding his subjects to buy one of the same item as soon as possible. Circle that item. Kind of a weird one. Hint number one. Who wouldn't want to show off their new car or television for a while? Hint number two. There's one item in this list that is useless unless two or more of the same item exist. Hint number three. The item in question could be in perfect working order, but the only way to show it off is if you use it as a pair. And I like how hints two and three are basically the same exact thing. Uh, but the answer is... Really? The king demand is... Not the shoes, that's what I was gonna say, because like, it works in a pair, but... Apparently... Oh! Oh, that makes sense. It's not the shoes, it is the telephone. Consider this puzzle solved. And there we have it. No, you don't actually get two separate telephones for the king to use himself, but he wants everyone else to get a telephone so that he could call them on their phones and tell him about his own new phone. Which is really singing funny, actually. And the final puzzle that we missed, puzzle number 52, Hat Weather. Okay, this one is a bit different depending on what region of the game you're playing. There are two different, they're both called hat weather, whether you're playing the US or the UK version, but uh, this puzzle will be entirely different if you're playing the UK version, so keep that in mind. There is a fellow with very particular rules when he wears his best hat. When it's, when it's sunny, he always wears his hat. When it's rainy, he doesn't wear his hat. When it's cloudy, he doesn't wear his hat unless it's been cloudy for two days in a row, in which case he wears his hat on the second of these days. Below is a chart of when this man wore his hat over the course of the one week. Use the panels to fill in the weather for each day, keeping in mind that it doesn't rain on cloudy days. Very, very weird, dude. It's also weird that his hat like barely fits above his afro, just like me! Hint number one. Start by placing a rainy day tile on each day where our friend didn't wear a hat. Hint number two. Once you put down the rainy day tiles as described in hint one, you may notice that there are no more places left for your cloudy tile. You could put it down on one of the days with a hat if that day was the second day in a row of a cloudy weather, but no two days in the same week shown appear to have been cloudy. Hint number three. If the week before the one shown here has a cloudy Saturday, this fellow could wear his hat on Sunday, couldn't he? The solution is cloudy on Saturday. That's not Saturday. Um, wait, is it cloudy? What? Hold on. What do you want me to do? Because like the solution picture is a bit confusing. Okay, so cloudy on Sunday. Sunny on Monday, cloudy on Tuesday automatically, rainy on Wednesday, sunny on Thursday, rainy on Friday, and sunny on Saturday. This should do the trick. There we go, good old smiling Layton. Huh, wonderful. Because you can see in the solution picture it has a cloudy Saturday right on the side, so I got confused for a second. But that just means the next Saturday or the Saturday before the first Sunday was cloudy. If the Sunday is cloudy, I understand these puzzles sometimes. And those are all the puzzles we missed back in Dropstone. Now that's taken care of, I guess we're going to go head back to our room since there's literally nothing else for us to do. Besides talk to this guy, of course. Finally, it's time to get down to business. It's been forever since I got to do some real work. What do you mean? Didn't you just finish repairing the train? Sort of, but before I could kick back, I gotta do- Oops! Uh, I mean, nothing. Things are good. Hmm. Now 
Oh, hello. On the way back, this guy showed up and got a really weird looking hair. Conrad. Good day, sir. The name's Conrad. I am a student from the village of Dropstone. I'm headed to Luxembourg, so for a while at least, it seems we'll be traveling together. Hmm. Say, have you heard about that long tunnel on the way to Luxembourg? When the train passes through it, every light on board goes dark. Stranger still, once the train nears the tunnel, all across to the deluxe car is cut off. Or all access to the deluxe car is cut off. Just imagine the kind of monkey business some passengers get up to under the cover of dark. Hee <laughs> hee. Something very strange must be going on if they're cutting off all access to the deluxe suites. Of course, it all makes perfect sense. Why didn't I see it before? Luke, I think I figured things out. Quick, you two, to the deluxe suites. Oh, you mean Flora's with us? I didn't notice because she's so, ir like, useless with us. Right behind you. The rest of the Guess we're heading back, but now that that guy's here, it makes me feel like we're gonna find. No, this guy literally just shows up to, like, be a plot device. Doesn't even have a puzzle plot device for us. How lame. Head back over here. I feel like I should be examining them along the way because one of them might have a puzzle, but I guess not. I could click these things properly, that'd be nice. Uh, that's our room, so we're just gonna keep on going. Wait, no, it's not our room. Here we are at the deluxe car. Something's written on that sign of the door. Apparently, it appears to be a puzzle of some sort. I have a hunch that if we can solve the puzzle, we can gain access to the car. Puzzle number 56, the door's code. In order to pass through this door, Luke and Leighton must arrange the symbols according to the following rules. The star must be next to the moon, the X must be second from the top, the circle must be somewhere above the diamond. The moon must be located two places below the diamond. That was, uh, acted, announced, proclaimed, very awkwardly. Give it a shot. Hint number one. The X must be second from the top. As you know exactly where the X should go, start by placing the symbol. Once it's filled in, move to onto the other conditions. Hint number two. The moon must be located two places below the diamond. If the moon is two places below the diamond, then the diamond must be in one of the top three spots. X already occupies the second spot, so the diamond is in either the first or the third space from the top, right? Hint number three. The circle must be somewhere above the diamond. If you combine the above statement with the information from hint 2, it's clear that the only place you could put the diamond in the th is in the third spot from the top. Once you place the diamond, you should have uh, enough symbols in place to solve the rest of the puzzle easily. I don't know why I'm like so stinking out of it today, but uh, the solution is a circle, X, diamond, star, and moon. Consider this puzzle solved. A true gentleman leaves no puzzle unsolved. You're in. Good job and crack it the... Cracking that burp, I guess. There we are. The door's open now. And we got a hamster toy. It's a Mario block, apparently. Holy smoke, look at this place. It's out of control. Yes, it's far more luxurious than the standard cars. Tickets to stay here must cost a pretty penny. Uh, but before we do that, I noticed on the guide, like, it showed that there is a new person that popped up in one of these rooms. So we're gonna go back? Is it in this room? Yes, it is, this lady. Uh, Marjorie. I thought it was, like, Marie Joie for a second. I was like, what, One Piece? Good day, sir. I'm headed back to Luxembourg, where I teach the sciences. The sciences. Where might you and yours be headed? Our destination is, well, flexible. You see, we're traveling in search of a relic called the Elysium Box. We've managed to find some anecdotal evidence suggesting the box is tied to a strange town. A phantom town not recorded on any map in human possession. Does any of this sound familiar to you? Well, mercy me, you've got quite an adventure on your hands, don't you? Well, I can't say I've heard of this particular town to speak of, I can offer you a tale that I've heard. Some say the Military Express stops in an eerie town that's terrorized by a vampire. First rumors of a vampire and now phantom towns. Goodness, it's like we're living in a mystery novel. 
Again, no real puzzles, but more information that might be important later on. So, now that's taken care of, let's head into the Deluxe Car. Not the Deluxe Caliber, but maybe Solange is living here. Oh, hey, we got hint coins that we could search for now. There might be new hint coins in past locations that we've already been to now that the map is switched around. I don't really want to go out of my way to check every area that we've already been to, though. Oh, Professor, this room is just breathtaking. It looks exactly the same as the rest of the rooms we've been in. And one half of the times as big as our room to boot. Okay, because of the size, it's different. Plus, just look at how super cushy this sofa is. Whee! Come now, don't jump on the sofa. Luke, do you remember the discussion we had about how gentlemen act when... Wow, you're right, it's so cushy. Whee! I thought Layton was going to join in with him. How's everybody feeling? Sorry to bust in on the party, but I'm just here to snazz up the rooms. Hmm, let's see, should they go here? Negative, Sammy, that's no good. Hmm. Hey, you there, smart looking dude. I mean, you, man. Me, good sir. Uncle Beluga, hmm, I mean, the boss man told me to pretty up the place with some flowers. Can you figure out where I should put these things to make the room smell nice? Of course, it shouldn't be too much te uh, too much trouble to find a spot for flowers as lovely as these. Surprised you can kick us out of here, but whatever, puzzle number 57, smell the roses. Ah, there's nothing like the fresh cut roses to boost your spirits. Can you help Sammy freshen up the whole car with their fragrance? Tap a square with your stylus to place a rose. The fragrance of each rose reaches the two spaces in all the directions, but can't penetrate walls. If the fragrance of two or more roses overlaps, the resulting smell will be overpowering. So make sure to keep the roses spaced out. To remove an existing rose, just tap on it again. Hint number one. Here's a handy hint. Start your work from the corners of the car. Hint number two. Place a rose in the lower right corner of the car. Then think about where everything else needs to go. Hint number three. To solve this puzzle, you need to put roses in five different spots. So we have like unlimited roses if we want to, but we can't make it overwhelming. So you put roses in every corner except for the bottom left. You put your fourth rose right here and your fifth rose right here. Consider this puzzle solved. A true gentleman leaves no puzzle unsolved. Well done. Five roses were just enough to freshen up the car. There. How's that? Oh, real nice. It's not crazy, but it'll make a statement. I'm sure it'll jive with the boss man. Boss man, you say? No. Well, anyhow, kick back, relax, and enjoy the rest of your ride on the military express. Now the whole room smells nice. Mm, yes, quite nice, I'd say. But back to the task at hand. We've given this place a once-over and come up empty-handed. A gentleman can't very well go barging into other people's rooms, so let's just go to our own room for now. Oh, Professor, do we have to? It feels like it's gotten so late. Can't we just stay here for now? The <laughs> Also, what do you mean you can't go barge into people's rooms? It's literally what we've been doing this entire stinking game. We've just been going to people's rooms. And, like, we... This is literally the first room we've checked in the deluxe suite. So, why are you giving up so early, Layton? It's the strangest thing. All of a sudden, I'm so tired. What's the matter, Flora? Oh, gosh, all of a sudden, I'm kind of sleepy, too. All right, you two. This is no time for jokes. Oh, dear. I'm suddenly quite tired myself. Oh, I get it. When the kids are sleepy, they're joking around, but when you're sleepy, it's a gentlemanly snooze! Oh, what's going on out there? Am I... Dreaming? I'm dreaming of puzzles! Puzzle number 58, in the tunnel. Two trains pass in the darkness of the tunnel. Move them around so that each locomotive ends up in the opposing track. Ah, oh, it's a sliding puzzle. Okay, not gonna read the hints, let's just go for it. Uh, we saw a puzzle like this before as well, so no really need to read the whole explanation again. 
But what we want to do is, oh, we got like a second track in the middle that we could place cars as well, which is nice. So we're going to do that and that. Uh, put number three right here. And we're putting them in like weird order. It's kind of confusing. You have to like put, mix the blue and reds together and everything like that. Um, what the fruit? Four, I'm gonna put two right here. Okay, three. This is confusing, but I'm not gonna question it. Just trust the guide. Put that right there. Uh, want they want this one in the middle for some reason. Bring it to what? Um. There we go. Here goes. That was almost too easy. Sorry, we got a bit quiet right there. I just kind of uh, got lost in a little bit of it. But uh, the two trains speed off in the darkness, else each carrying number two. The cars are really over. Yawn. Hmm. Hmm. My word, I must have fallen asleep on the couch. How careless of me. Do you know what happened in that tunnel, Luke? Sorry, Professor, but I slept through the whole thing too. And I had the strangest dream. In my dream, part of the Molentelli Express switched tracks while we were in the tunnel. You mean to say that one of the train's cars is now riding different rails? Luke, what you saw may not have been a dream at all. If one car did split off from the train, it would no longer be bound to our Luxembourg. Maybe that car is how you get to the Phantom Town. I'm beginning to suspect you're right on the money, Luke. I hope the Phantom Town isn't as creepy as it sounds. And we got a hamster toy! I don't know why we're gonna let him play with the light bulb, but whatever. Got any other bright ideas? Everybody get ready to rock! The next stop is Frozen! Come on, passengers, let me hear you scream! Who's insane? Of course, how could I have missed this? Do you recall how this ticket was missing a destination? Well, it seems that the destination was staring us in the face all along. Really? But where, Professor? I was really underestimating how awesome that guy's voice is, but enough about that. Puzzle number 59, a ticket to where? And this is by far the coolest stinking puzzle in the Professor Layton stinking franchise. In front of you sits the ticket that Layton and Luke found when, with Dr. Schrader. At first glance, the ticket appears to have no destination written on it, but when you look at it the right way, the ticket discloses its destination, the town of Full Sense. The key to spotting the destination is the number that has been cut out of the ticket. What number used to be there? Use the ticket in the instruction booklet to puzzle this one out. They are literally referring to the physical instruction booklet that comes with the game. If you open it up, you will find an, a ticket that is exactly like the one that Layton has, and you can physically try to solve this puzzle instead of just having to imagine what the... What it would look like folded up in your head. That is stinking amazing. Like when I discovered that for the first time, I think I was at a restaurant when I got to this puzzle. I was like, oh my God, what? I have to get home immediately so I could check the instruction booklet, the enclosed instruction book. But yeah, it's so stinking cool. And like the fact that it takes you out of the game, it's really cool whenever games do stuff like that. Kind of like the puzzle in Star Tropics that they did to uh, prevent people from like hacking or whatever or emulating. It's just a really cool puzzle and I really like it. Anyway, hint number one. To find the answer, you have to fold the ticket in a particular way. Yeah, you think? Hint number two. First, fold the entire ticket in half lengthwise. Next, fold the ticket lengthwise along the middle of each row of numbers. 
Fold it just so, and the top half of the top row of numbers will connect to the bottom half of the bottom row of numbers, revealing a string of letters. Hint number three. The words for full cents are written on this ticket. What number must belong in the cutout portion in order to form an E when the ticket is folded? Giving you a lot of information in these hints, though, that might be for people who uh, may not have gotten this game with the instruction booklet, like if they bought it used copy at GameStop or something like that, so I understand that. And I was actually really lucky because the first three Professor Layton games, I got them all used at GameStop, but all of them came with three instruction books, so I'm very grateful for that. Uh, but the solution is that a number two would be placed there in order to spell out the message for full sense. Consider this puzzle solved. A true gentleman leaves no puzzle unsolved. Excellent, the missing number is two. If you fold the ticket as shown and line up the two sets of numbers, they form letters that spell out the phrase for full sense. It looks like the ticket's destination was there all along. I get it. Well, I suppose it means we've almost reached our destination. Yes. Wow. Wow. This is strange. When did it get so dark? What do you mean? I do believe we've arrived at the next stop. But I don't see Flora, Professor. Where could she be? Hi, you two. Glad to see you are finally awake. Flora, where did you run off to? I'm sorry, but the train car was so stuffy that, I, that when we stopped, I went outside for some air. You went out alone? Are you crazy? It's dangerous out there. Who knows what kind of creeps could be lurking around? Oh, well... I'll be more careful from now on. Watch your tone, Luke. A gentleman always remembers to treat a lady with kindness and respect. Now, since we're all back together, why don't we get off this train and see where we are? Surprised they didn't give us much to be like, that's good, Professor, let's go outside the train and see where they are. Uh, but we solved the mystery of the train ticket. The ticket was the ticket was for those headed to Full Sense, a destination accessible only to those riding in a particular car on the Voluntary Express. It would seem that Dr. Schrader must have visited Full Sense sometime before his death. But with that, I think we're going to end it off right here. Next time on Professor Layton and the Diabolical Box. We're going to get off the train and see where exactly we've ended up. This is Midnight and Beyond, and I will see you all later. Good night.